By using the Curves Adjustment Tool in the mobile application Snapseed, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. Coming up. Hey, this is Jay from Mobile Pixel, helping you ignite your mobile creativity. Recently, I did a blog post about some photo editing apps for both uh, Android and iOS. And one of them is Snapseed. And Snapseed is a, is a decent photo editing app. Uh, I, I said in my review that I didn't think much of their filters. I think they're a little heavy handed, but they do have some really good uh, editing tools, basic editing tools. And one of the things that they have added recently that it's really exciting is a curves adjustment tool. Now, for those of you who are familiar with using Photoshop and other uh, photo editing applications, desktop applications, you probably are aware of the curves adjustment or you've heard of it, you know what it is. Uh, but for some of you who, who haven't, this may be something that's really new. And it's a decent tool. It's a really easy thing to use. It can get very technical, but you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but what it, it's also very powerful in that it can allow you to kind of make adjustments to a photo to really kind of bring it to life. Uh, and you can see here the photo that I have. This is an image I took uh, when I was in Colorado back uh, last summer. And as you can see, it's a, it's a nice photo. But it's because it was cloudy out, uh, you, your sensor is going to kind of like look at the light and shadows and darkness and everything and kind of basically uh, try to meter or, you know, apply a, a proper exposure to the entire scene. And so sometimes what happens is you wind up with an image like this that looks good, but it's a little flat and we kind of want to bring it to life. And one of the best ways to do that is with the curve tool. Now, there are other editing tools that can be used. So for example, you know, as you can see here, you can adjust the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, ambience, some other things. But what happens when you use these particular tools is you're going to adjust the entire image. And sometimes that may work, but other times I think for an image like this, it's not going to work. So if I adjusted the contrast, it would adjust the contrast for the entire image and it's not going to work well to make certain areas, maybe get them a little darker and so other, other areas a little brighter. And so that's where the curves tool comes in. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll select the curves tool here. And as you can see, what this does, and we'll kind of take away the, uh, the frame there. So what you can see, uh, let me actually put that back. Okay, so take this down and there we go. So now what you can see here is uh, this information that is contained within the, within the image. And again, it doesn't have to be something that's going to be very technical. All you have to know is that the right-hand side of the grid are your highlights, the left-hand side are your, your darks or your blacks, and then of course in the middle are your mid-tones. So what is happening here is on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you're seeing the, the, the edges kind of drop off. So basically what that's telling me in layman's terms is that you know, you, you have some highlights that you're missing and you have some darker areas that you're kind of like that are just kind of dull and bland. And one of the easiest ways to sit there and adjust a photo that's a little flat like this is to use what they uh, what is known as the S curve. And the S curve, basically what it does, it's going to take the image, expand the highlights a little bit, bring the image and bring the darker tones down a little bit and just give the image that much more punch. It's just going to make that little bit of adjustment. So what I'll do is, you know, you click on one the, the line. It's a little harder because sometimes you're, you're you're obviously using your fingers to do this, and you kind of expand it out a little bit, okay? And so that's the first part of the S, and then down at the bottom, going to go in the other direction and pull that down. And so you can see immediately, we've already have an image that has changed. And if we click, we hold it down, we can see what the original looks like. And then what we have now. Okay. So I'm actually, I think the skies are a little bit too bright in this. So I'm going to kind of bring this, uh, this brightness down a little bit. If I can go on there. There we go. Okay. But we still have what I think is, is a decent adjustment. Just with two little adjustments like that, making this little slight little S. We go from an image that looks good, but it's a little flat to something that has a little bit more contrast and a little bit more punch. Uh, now, the the tool, if you don't want to do the adjustments manually, uh, they have some presets. 
So we'll just go ahead and accept that. But if we go back to the curves tool, okay, they have some presets that you can use. And some of them are has contrast that's a little softer. Some of it's kind of hard. Um, then they also have some other ones that change the colors a little bit. And what this does is it utilizes the different channels inside the curve. So you have different channels. So you have red, green, and blue, and you can adjust the channels based upon that. So if I go in here and I say, okay, the image looks pretty good to where I had it, but I think the image looks a little blue. I think there's a, there's a little bit too much of a blue haze in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust just the red channel within the image. And again, I'm going to take the line and I'm just going to kind of bring this up a little bit if I can get my thumb on here just slightly okay you don't want to do it too much obviously if you go too far you have a you have a, a decent effect if that's what you want to do but it also looks a little bit unnatural so uh, I will go ahead and put it right about there okay and I'll go ahead and accept that and again you can always kind of look at what your image looked like before and so see, here you see you know Prior to that, you know, you had kind of like the bluish haze, giving it a little bit, bumping up the red channel a little bit, just kind of seems to um, give it some little extra, you know, life to the photo, okay? And now at this point, you could still go and make other changes if you want to. I mean, that's fine. You can go to the tune image, and, you know, on this one, I'll say, you know what, let's, let's kind of bring the ambience up a little bit. And what that, the ambience is going to do is kind of give, expose a little bit more detail here in the foreground, so again, if we look at it, you know, it doesn't do anything with the colors, but what it does is it kind of opens up the shadow areas, the darker areas a little bit, and exposes a little bit more detail, which I like as well. Okay, and then, of course, you can do the other ones as well. If you want to adjust the warmth or the shadows, the highlight, you can do that. You could still go back and make other adjustments if you wanted to with the curves. But the best part is, is that, you know, you don't, you can do whatever you want. The good thing is, is that what this allows is for you to make, you know, subtle adjustments to your image. Because I think a lot of times people have a tendency to take an image and really kind of do something to it that I think takes away from it a little bit. So, you know, again, if we look at it here, the changes aren't major. They're subtle. But I do think that it gives a little bit more life to the photograph. So, you know, go ahead and experiment with that. Uh, you know, the great thing about Snapseed is that you can always save a photo as a copy. You're not, you know, you can kind of keep your original image. So that's always good. And that's going to do it for uh, this video. I appreciate you checking it out. Uh, please go ahead and go to mobilepixel.co slash sign up. Sign up for the newsletter. You're only going to get a post whenever I post something on the site. So you will not get any spam, anything like that. Please leave some comments down below if you think maybe I left some information out. Or if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So uh, that's going to do it for this one. I'll see you next time here on Mobile Pixel, helping you ignite your mobile creativity. See ya.